Okay, looks like we're back. What is this? <laughs> okay. Check on the old Twitch gate. Ah, that's just a moderation sequence there. Going to the volume. That's pretty neat. Great effect. Can see here that I have no arpeggiator whatsoever, but I don't have a volume here. So it's something to tweak my model, my volume. So I'm using a modulation sequencer to change the volume. Let's start a preset from scratch. Let's say it will use the always label oscillator again. I'm going to use dual oscillators. Just to get a different sound, it is very near drifting from one another. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the modulation sequencer to adjust the volume of the layer. The entire layer. So now you don't hear anything when I play. I'm to use now modulation sequencer, the layer options, volume. I'm going to play a key and start tweaking here. And I'm going to use a sync. So, what I have done here, so the modulation sequencer is, uh, is synced to the tempo, it's the whole tempo, and for every new key, it's going to resync the, the sequencer. And my speed is very fast, I'm not using the smooth option, so it does a very quickly a cut on the sound. Depending on the sound it would load, it could produce clicks. It's a very low sound, so you have to use this mode option, but it removes a bit the effect of the gate.
and the modulation sequence is going to the volume. Okay, so that's that's very easy and basic to do. I don't have any effects. Uh, let me think here. Well, 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 okay. So my amplitude envelope here, you can see that it starts high and goes low. So let's remove that. Remove the sustains. I'm going to just use uh, let me reset, remove all. Okay, that's it. I'm going to add another node. It's not good to go directly to the sustain node. It's best to only have the first one, and then you can just adjust the others, the other one. So you have a very short attack. Otherwise, it can be a bit chaotic and pre produce some strange noise. Very quickly here. Very quick. Should have a delay here. I don't want this very short PK. Actually, release, not PK. So that's very basic, okay? But now you can go crazy with the unison. Ha! Ah, so we have 16 voices. It's going to unison all the 16 voices. More. Let's add some chorus. I'm going to add a bit of effects. And here on the same one, that's the one I'm tweaking. I'm going to select new effect, double chorus. And I'm going to select same effect shoe. Just a simple reverb here. And from effect one, or my eye, it's a bit strange. Send effect two. So here, on effect one, let me explain again. On effect one, I'm going to select send to effect two. I'm going to send, uh, say, 40%. Check something here on my master tuning. Okay, on my layer. I'm going to want to octave it down. Sure, it is down actually. Or four. I'm trying to pitch shorts on the only song, the only song that I play shorts. Forgot that. Too low. Twelve instead. One trick I forgot to tell. Um, I don't remember on the Macintosh, on the Apple computers. Uh, they don't say. Uh, yeah, but on Windows, the, the right click it's fine tuning. Right click and move up and down, it's fine tuning. I have to hold shift. But on the Apple computer, just hold shift and left click or normal click and also do fine tuning. So, 
what have we done here? Let's let me put this song back again. You can see very clicky because it's changed the volume very fast. So to avoid that, you have to use the smooth option here. Smooth. See? It's near near off. Zero zero one. But that's normal because it's chopping the sound very fast. So I have to adjust my smooth option. I think it's actually distorting my sound card. Probably starting my song first, so that's just the volume here. Yeah, it's started here. You can see the effect here. Because the master limiter was activated. So. Okay, where? Clicking again, I have to use this mode option. But the other clicking was the master limiter. If you don't like the master limiter, because sometimes it, it can be a pain to use, you can use the disable limiter. This option is going to disable limiter for good and it's never going to use again. But sometimes it can be good because, for instance, if you're going to lower my master volume here, you will start like crazy. It's not a bad start, so it actually is good. Okay, that's pretty much it on this topic. Let me check another thing that people ask me a lot. The good thing is that the, this video is going to stay online for uh, later watching, just not live usage. So anyone can watch later. Just let me remember, let me check the showcase in here. I don't remember which this one is. Check. So how this is complex filter modulation. One filter. Oh, okay. I see what's it. You have to hold the key. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> There's another one. Because what do you have here? You have two modulation envelopes. Three actually. One, two, and three. Sorry. And here you have the three envelope modulation envelopes. And what they are doing? They change the frequency of the filter, but also changing the LFO amount and speed. So you have this short intro of the frequency and then the LFO starts taking care of the, the frequency of the filter. Yeah. 
Pretty nice effect. Just checking one thing here. Okay, Let me check what's the difference on this one. Oh, sub start modulation is also a very neat effect. Here we have um, the sound. I'm using the RPG, but let me turn off the RPG. Here's a very short envelope here. <laughs> So this preset specifically, what is it doing? It's doing an arpeggiator. So when I press a key, what happens? The arpeggiator is going to generate a new key for every 132. Let me make it slower so I can. Very slow then. So the arpeggiator is generated a new key. Let me adjust the volume here on the volume action. No, just the amplitude amplitude envelope. Sorry. This is very quick. Remove the effect. So what, what happens here is that the LFO is changing the sampler sump start. So it's changing where the, the next note is going to start on the sample. So we can start on the on the start. Uh, let's say here this here the start and then and go on to the end depending on the value select. So here we have the sample. We have two layers actually, it's Phonex's wave and Phonex 2 wave. Let me delete one. And the LFO is random. So it's generating a new value for every one fourth of key. Now, if you start playing the arpeggiator faster, and adjust the envelope time. Okay, so this is a very easy way to my oh my glass key to add modulation to a sound. And on this case, I was using 32 here. Make it very quickly and change here the envelope time. Let's hear the original preset with the effects and everything else. Yes, I do have plans on adding more effects because uh, the effects we have here are mainly the ones from the Fusic 8000 that are already ported to the new code because what happens is that uh, I have to take every code from Fusic Station 7 and report 
to VUSIX Station 8 code, which is a new code. And it's very time consuming. And this year I got very slow due to some health issues, but uh, I'm working again now. I'm trying to with these videos to get more uh, in touch with my, my users and also to sh really showcase the product because uh, a lot of people don't know what you can do with music station, uh, how far you can go with it. Um, so yeah, I do hope. <laughs> For now, that's just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's very new. I know, but I'm getting there eventually. Check another one here. Oh, this is, a, this is the wave sequencer. Okay. So the wave sequencer, let me check one thing here. Oh, okay. I'm doing a very simple wave sequencer type, type one. Um, I don't know, you probably didn't check the other video I was making where I'm talking about, uh, Wuzik Station 8 has a different type of wave sequencer. Initially, when I released it, it, it only had this new type of a sequencer. Then later, I added the type 2, which is the original legacy wave sequencing type. And uh, what happens with this new wave, sequ wave, wave sequencer type is that it's like a complex arpeggiator because it's going to generate a new note for each step. And this note is sent to do the rest of the layer, which has a sample player. So what happens is that each step triggers the amplitude envelope, creates a new uh, voice, and that voice is going to follow until the envelope is done. And the next step does the same thing with the next step options, of course. So you can have some sort of a, a complex arpeggiator or even um, some rhythm sounds, drum sounds, without uh, chopping the sound from one step to another, like the regular wa wave station used to do, and the original waves uh, music station did with the original wave sequencing. So it's a bit hard to explain, but uh, let me s let me see if I can explain again. Mode one is like an arpeggiator, and mode two is like the classic wave sequencing. So this is this is mode one. So for each step, we have a different tune. You can see here in below, uh, diff a different sound is being loaded, and the amplitude envelope is triggered, and also the filter frequency of filter one and two is being changed by amplitude envelope. So since it's being triggered for each note on the, on the sequencing, let me put very slow here. I can hear better. Make it faster. Because if I use mode 2, mode 2 is just going to fade from one step to another. It's not going to retrigger the amplitude envelope. Uh, let's load another preset here. Check the drums. The drums, yeah, the drums is using also the same same type. You can see I'm going to, to change the amplitude envelope.
That's because each step is triggering a new envelope, a new voice. It also eats up the polyphony very fast. Now, the mode 1 doesn't have this problem because mode 1 is just using one voice and ping pong from one sound to another sound. Um, okay. Check another one. A trio sequence of units. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. You have three sequences here using different zones here. So we have one for the lower and the high zones here. So we have sequence one, sequence two, sequence three. So you can see that what I'm doing, I'm just playing with the envelope of the, of each sequencer here, because one is the hi hat, the other is the bass, and the other is the snare. So I'm just playing with the envelope because the wave sequencer here you, is using mode one. So for each new note, it's generating a new one to the envelope, like I said before. Um, well, that's. It's more true, oh, okay. Now, here is the big difference of the sequencer mode 1 and 2. This is the preset I created to, to test out the sequencer, the wave sequencer mode 2. And what happens here is that you have just one voice. And this voice has internally two players. And the player is just ping ponging the sounds from the steps on the wave sequencer from one another using the X fade here at the bottom and what happens is with mode 1 you don't have this option you just create a new um, a new note for each sequence oh that's a good question uh, essentially, no, that's no, no way. Sadly, there is no way to convert because, well, not, not right now, but we think it could be possible. We we'll have to copy the options from one sequence into another but right now no there's no, no way because when we replace it uh, someone asked me sorry I didn't say but someone asked me if I could let's say I have a sample player load let's say here sample player and I want to turn this into a wave sequencing and use all these options here to the wave sequencing and you can't because when you replace it you're going to start with a, with a blank and uh, but I could I guess if you 
guys ask me nicely, I could code it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let me think. I will, I will think about this because it's, it's a good question. Because um, you could export. Uh, no, you can't. There's no option. But I got a quick idea. Just keep asking me. <laughs> so keep keep an eye on uh, on our forum or our Facebook page for an update and. Uh, I'm working right now on a new beta version for uh, Vuzik Station, Vuzik 1000, and Vuzik 4000, which fixes some uh, of the problems I found. And just remind me of that, and I will try to, to do that. Oh, another option that's hiding that many people don't know is velocity to layer. So, like, you have, uh, again, 11 sounds loaded, each sound is a new layer. And here on the sample player option you have note key to pen. It's a nice one, especially for pianos. But the velocity to layer fade. So it's going to actually fade the waveform, not just select. Nice. You can see here on on the bottom of the screen, I'm playing a note. Uh, the highest, I go on the keyboard here for the mouse, the highest the velocity, and the high the sound that selects here from the list. That's a very nice feature. Uh, as for the improved sound, SFZ support. Well, what happens is that uh, the old code, when I try to load a, uh, let me skip each each my sample player again. Let me check my. Let me think here. Uh, I don't have any file test, but uh, I guess I could find someone. But uh, when I load the, uh, 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 let me. Right here. When I loaded some uh, SFZ files, I don't know if they say SFZ or what else they uh, they say. They would present a list of errors of op opcodes not supported and did not load the actual sample. So I took a look on the code because this is a, a code that's uh, open source, not created by me, and uh, I took a look that. Uh, Actually, the samples w were loaded, but just the opcodes uh, I did not support. Uh, they coded this open source code. So I just took a look at the resulting um, um, let's say what I get from the code. I just look at and uh, realize that the samples were being loaded. Correctly. So if the samples are loaded correctly, uh, it doesn't matter the opcodes for me because I don't use them. Uh, at least most most of them I don't use. I just I'm just looking for the actual samples. So this was was a big improvement because a lot of uh, of the files users were loading had those unsupported opcodes, and uh, but the files the sample files were okay, and now they the, those files work. They load and play correctly. Um, the waveforms are not playing right with some waveforms. Uh, ah, yes, okay, that's right. If someone sending me a link, you have to send to my email because the forum, the the message board, the, the chat board here doesn't support uh, links. You can you can check me on Facebook and send me a message there too. Uh, 
Um, okay, let me check something else. I was playing before, and uh, some people don't know, but the amplitude envelope can do some pretty wicked uh, envelope and not envelope, but <laughs> uh, amplitude modulation. Let me show an example here. Okay, two, three, one. And it's not going to work. Won't work because I don't have any attack. Um, what the hell here? This is one, two. Let's just say two. Yeah, but a bit of decay and almost no attack. Let's just play around with the this option. So what 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 have I done here? I have added an attack. Because you always need an attack, otherwise the envelope is going to go a bit crazy. Then I have sustain point one, sustain point two. And what happens as I hold the note is going to sustain between these two points and create this effect. Just playing around with this option because a lot of people don't know about this option. Because usually most envelopes will just have sustain point, like an attack and decay with the sustain. This is butchered. A, D, S, R envelope, very basic. Attack, decay, sustain, release. This is a very basic envelope, but uh, what happens is with this new envelope, you can actually have two sustain points, sustain one and then sustain two, so they keep ping pong from one another. So it's very useful for some kinds of sounds. Oh yes, the version 7 uh, had this option for the effects where you have uh, presets for the effects and all. I have to check how I'm going to do that because uh, it's something I was was going to add anyway, but uh, I ended up not having time to, to add. And the envelopes actually is, is a good option because uh, let's say you, you want a very basic ADSR envelope, you don't have to draw it. Just select the preset and adjust the values. Very good one. Okay, what else? <laughs> it's a lot of things. Um, you have audio input. You can also process something with the audio input. It goes to the effects if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me think on another uh, thing. Let me take a look at the interface here and the possible layers. Oh, the super OS. It's a 
Good one. I like that one. There is not much I can talk about in Super Oscillator because it does what it does. Unless you don't know much, but uh, what happens here is for do those who never use the Super Oscillator, uh, you have the waveform type. Usually it's just salto because uh, pulse is not very uh, useful, but it sounds good for some types of sounds. And you have 16 voices for one note so it's like if 16 oscillators stack it together or you can select uh, other values like 4, 18 and the detuning amount from one to another This is better than unison because this is polyphonic. Actually, much better than unison for being polyphonic. But sometimes you want monophonic, so in this case, it's not monophonic. And you also have the spread. The spread is going to change. Uh, the volume and stereo panning for each voice from center it and all with the same volume from totally spread from left to right and the volume is going from zero to to the maximum volume possible this is good because the original uh, trying to remember the name of the synthesizer if anyone remember It was the original Super Oscillator, I think it was from Roland, I don't remember. It has this option of the volume uh, spread, but uh, it didn't have many options to change it. So let's add two Super Oscillators. One I'm going to add an octave below and fine tune a bit. I have two, two layers of the super oscillator. One is one octave down, and add a bit of fine, fine symptom. And now let's add in some chorus. My keyboard is bad for playing. Try an arpeggiator. That's for it. Um, I like arpeggiators. I forgot one thing. This is the layer page later. My mistake. Okay, let's use the master page later. So it sends to both layers. So I select here on the left master and page later. Now it works. <laughs> so many things. Master
Now I can really go crazy for this one. Okay. So now I have a problem. I have two layers. So I have two filters. Filter for layer one and a filter for layer two. And I want to change them at the same time. Oh, how can I do that? I'm going to use the modulation wheel on the keyboard. So layer one, modulation one, filter, frequency. And layer two, modulation one, filter, frequency. So I have two layers of the filter frequency group. And I'm going to put some changes here. And uh, let me check one thing here. I'm going to change one the filter low value so they don't sound very the same. So what? Ah, my camera got a bit crazy now. Okay, it's back. Okay, so this is just showing a bit uh, a few things. Let's go back here to the filters. You can see here I'm using a smooth option with filter, otherwise it sounds terrible when I change the filter. But sometimes uh, you want that? Let's see. Let me show what I'm talking about. The letter is one. And I'm going to use a LFO for the filter frequency. I'm going to disable the second layer, so just here this layer for now. I'm going to use a randomic filter. Modulation now. Now you can hear what's happening with the filter because it's changing very fast. But I want to use the smooth option. Okay, the the sound waveform from the Music Station 7 library. Yeah, I know that. The problem is, let me check here. You have to turn high quality here on the top. It, it helps a bit. Uh, let me show you. Okay, where are my sounds? I have a lot of sounds. Yes, this one, I don't remember. Uh, you have to, to turn high quality on. Because the, the code from Vosic Station version 7 to version 8 is very different. Uh, it uses actually as oversampled internal code, while Vosic Station 7 it uses a uh, multi point interpolation. Which makes the sound a bit muffled, and, and, and I didn't like that. Uh, Vosic Station version 8 has a more crispy sound, but it can be problematic sometimes if you don't use the high quality mode. 
But I, I want to take a look anyway to see if it's something else besides that. Because my list for my to-do list for <laughs> station version 8 is very long. A lot of stuff to to code. And but um, I'm doing okay. I'm slowing getting some stuff done. If you haven't checked it, check out the, the new beta. I have done some very important uh, changes, especially for Fuzik, Fuzik 8000, which had a very serious problem. And um, I uh, also found a, a bit of things today while doing the video that I'm going to address. You know what else? Well, I think for for today I'm going to end up. It's been two hours already. My eyes are hurting a bit. <laughs> uh, but on this tomorrow uh, I won't be able to stream. But um, Sunday at the same time I'm going to be able to stream. Just minding that I'm in Brazil, so my my time zone is different. Uh, I wrote on the on the page on the Twitch page on the Facebook. What time I'll, I'll be here again? Uh, I may be streaming some games later, later on, but just for testing Twitch, uh, and because I, I like to to play Resident Evil. <laughs> but I'm mainly going to use this for streaming about Vuzix Station, Vuzix uh, 8000, and the new upcoming projects for next year. And um, there's a lot more I can talk about Vuzik Station, but uh, right now I got a huge blank because it's my first live transmission and I got a bit nervous. <laughs> and I apolo apologize for my accent and for sometimes missing the point when people ask me things, but the, because sometimes I don't, I don't know what to do and I need more time to figure out how to do things. But Vuzik Station has been my, my baby for a long time. Version 8 now. Uh, I remember version 1. Man, <laughs> it, it has been a very long ride. And a lot, a lot of things have, have changed. I remember version 1 was very basic. But, uh, what most people don't know is that Vuzik Station has Nothing to do with, with Vuzik's, with uh, Wave Station. Uh, Wave Station, uh, I never had one actually. What I had was an Insonic uh, uh, workstation. And the Insonic had wave sequencing and hyperwave. It was trans, trans waves and hyperwaves. And, uh, and man, that, that beast was great. <laughs> I love it. And I wanted that in software because uh, the hardware machine was not working anymore. You use disk drives and SCSI devices. And then uh, I did I did get a wave station at one time, but I didn't use it very much for the wave sequencing. Uh, and I sold it very quickly. Then I got the in Sonic again for the second time, and it did some very good trans waves. That's what they call wave sequencing, and then I thought I'm um, um, replicating that option, and that's why uh, some options are different. Um, and I, I remember at the times there was no options for a computer like that. Uh, well, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. Uh, I will try again. Uh, we'll see again on Sunday. Maybe later, later today I'm going to play Resident Evil for half an hour. That's the fires I can play without getting tired. <laughs> and I'm going to code more tomorrow and see if I can get some new features. Maybe for the next beta. Okay, see you guys. Thanks again. Bye bye.